Hello, my name is Alan Burden from Heavenly Heat and Masonry Heaters. If you haven't heard of Masonry Heaters, that's not surprising. Although they've been around for about 500 years, they never made it to Australia in any numbers. They offer us a much better solution to wood burning to heat our home than the slow combustion heaters that we're used to. Masonry heaters are far more efficient and clean. And they work in a very different way. The firebox is filled with wood, it takes about 20 kilos in a single load, and that is burned as hot and fast as possible. It creates a tremendous amount of heat, which is then circulated up through the secondary combustion chamber, which can double up as an oven, as we have here. Then to the top of the heater, circulates down through side channels internally before going to the flue, which comes from the base. During that period of time, the heat from the combustion is absorbed into the masonry. So this brickwork here, uh, from a fire that was out about two hours ago, is now hot but not too hot to touch and it's radiating out into the home and it will continue to do that for up to 24 hours. So we only light this fire once a day. Let's see how we do that. This is the process of lighting our masonry heater. The fire's been stacked, as you can see, and in a crisscross manner so that air can penetrate the stack of wood. There's about 20 kilos of wood in there. And we light the fire from the top, all the kindling, kindling is at the top. Uh, and we want full air supply, so we open the air intake door. The air intake comes into the hollow frame, the main jet of air is here, then it circulates around the hollow frame and we have slots in the top that put air across the face of the glass to help keep it clean and also put oxygen into the upper part of the fire to aid secondary combustion. We also have a damper here and that is left open and these remain open through the entire burning process which should take two to two and a half hours and then they are closed so that air no longer circulates through the heater carrying heat away. And of course the key to any good fire is good, clean, dry wood. Emphasis on dry. So you'll see that we have good dry kindling here and the, the timber is well dried so this fire should take hold relatively quickly. Now we'll close the door and leave it to its own devices. You note know, the fire has been lit at the top. That's critical to an efficient burn. Uh, when wood burns, it'll give a flame at about 250 degrees Celsius. But gases come off at lower temperatures than that. If you light a fire from the bottom, you're cooking these gases out, creating pollution, and that's unburnt fuel. With the little hot fire at the top, as this wood below starts to heat up, then those gases are more readily combusted and, uh, and add heat to the system and reduce the amount of pollution. It will take about an hour or so for that to become fully engaged and then we get maximum heat from the fire over the remaining time of the burn. You can't see on this shot, but above here we have our bake oven and that's the secondary combustion chamber. And so you, we can see at this stage of the game, flames coming up into that and circulating there and that aids for combustion of the gases that come off the timber. So now the fire's been going for around about 40 minutes and as you can see all of the timber in the load is fully engaged and beginning to burn through and so the heat will build up considerably from here on. There's already a considerable amount of heat coming from the fire door um, and so we've got that initial radiant heat even before the mass of the masonry begins to warm up. That will peak at around an hour after the fire has gone out and then will provide heat for up to 24 hours afterwards. So this fire has now been burning for over an hour and as you can see the pile has collapsed into a bit of extremely hot embers and I'm going to do something that we don't normally do and that's open the fire door and see how hot it is inside there. But while the fire door is incredibly hot and it's pushing out very strong radiant heat 
to the point where Fiona, who's four metres away, can feel that gentle radiant heat from where she is. Yet, the brickwork here never gets too hot to touch, and that heat will migrate through the whole masonry mass uh, over the next hour or so. I'm going to use this electronic gauge to measure the temperature. At, at the moment, the fire door is recording 442 degrees, but inside that firebox, it's much hotter. Well, this device is rated to a thousand degrees. It just went into overload. I got one measurement of 1017 and then it went into overload. So that is an incredibly hot fire. And what that fire is doing is consuming everything in the timber that is there to provide heat. So there's no smoke, no soot, no creosote, and there are none of the waste gases that come off timber and need 600 or 800 degrees plus to burn that often get wasted in slow combustion heaters. All of that is turned into heat and that heat is being stored in this masonry mass. And of course, we're not opening and closing that fire door all the time uh, and getting smoke and dirt coming into the house. And we're not throwing logs into a blazing fire and knocking the inside of the firebox around. So the amount of labor is less and the durability of the heater is, is for a lifetime. Fiona's just been outside and has taken a photograph of our top of our flue. Uh, and there's absolutely nothing coming out of it except some residual heat. Uh, the only thing that uh, we had to modify on our flue was to put bird netting around it because unfortunately occasional swallows came down and we had to rescue them from our cleanup outdoor which is just behind me. So after an hour and a half the burn is starting to die down and we have still a very hot bed of embers here, a lot of heat coming from the, the firebox. But you'll note that the door has remained perfectly clean. The air washed across the glass and, and the simple amount of heat that is generated in there removes any kind of soot deposits that might normally build up. The same applies to the walls of the firebox. You'll see they're absolutely clean. Now what you couldn't see on the video because they were at the sides, that during this burn, areas shaded by logs uh, sometimes get a film of, of black on them but as the fire continues that is burnt away that's fuel that's turned into heat so nothing goes to waste so despite all that excess heat these bricks are still touchable as will the whole masonry area and the heat will remain in that core and gradually migrate out over the next 24 hours. We've lit this fire during the day so that we could do this video. Normally we would light it in the evening. We enjoy this blazing fire, sit here on the sofa in front of the fire. And when we come to breakfast in the morning, the house is still warm and this is still radiating heat. Our fire's almost died down now. There's just a small bit of embers in there which will slowly glow away, just like on a barbecue, until they disappear almost entirely. Very little ash will be left. I put a, a 44 gallon drum under our floor seven years ago and I haven't emptied it yet. So very little ash left from this. Also, of course, a very clean burn. This has been a very quick burn, only less than two hours and everything has gone. Uh, very, very hot burn. And that's because our wood is exceptionally dry at the moment. We store it in a, a north facing sunroom and get our wood very, very dry, which is the key to a really good burn. And an efficient burn, so that none of those deposits are, are left. At this stage of the burn, uh, everything is almost burned out completely. We can think about closing the air intake door and the damper. We do this to prevent cool air circulating through the system and carrying the heat away. That's not what we want. We want it to remain in here. And so at this stage, we can close the damper and close the air intake door and quieten the system down. We don't want to do this too soon because we want a hot, fast, 
burn. We never close the air intake door during the burn. We're not trying to slow this burn down. We want it to be as fast and as hot as possible. So there we have it. That's how a masonry heater burns. That's how it works so efficiently and cleanly and stores the heat that's now radiating gently out through our home. If you have any questions about how they work, please look at our website. The address will be coming up shortly or give us a call. Or if you're passing the beautiful far south coast of New South Wales, you're welcome to drop in and see this in person.